Do you know how Windows Subsystem for Linux is able to run Linux on Windows without a single line of code from the Linux kernel? This is due to a special type of process known as a Pico process, and in this video we're going to be learning about these Pico processes along with several other special types of processes. So let's start by talking about protected processes. Just as the name suggests, these processes have a special kind of protection. Normally processes started with administrator privileges have debug permissions. These processes have the ability to read and write memory in any other process on the system. This behavior is generally useful. It's used to create plenty of legitimate applications like debuggers and profilers. However, this behavior violates the Digital Rights Management, or DRM, requirements which are imposed by the media industry. To comply with these requirements, protected processes were introduced. Even applications with debug privileges cannot read or write memory inside of a protected process. For an application to run as a protected process, it has to be signed with a Windows Media Certificate. It should also be noted that one protected process can access the memory of another protected process. Some examples of protected processes are the audio graph device process, used by Windows to decode protected audio, the Media Foundation protected media path, which is used to decode protected video, and the Windows Error Reporting Service, which reports crashes of protected processes. A subset of protected processes are Protected Process Lite, or PPL. These were introduced to allow third-party applications to have the same privileges as protected processes without having any associations with DRM or media. This is helpful for things like antivirus programs, since no antivirus wants its data to be read or modified by any malicious code. The biggest difference between these PPLs and protected processes is that protections are dependent on the process signature. Protections on PPLs are modifiable. Most system processes are PPLs since no system process wants its data to be read or modified by another process. Another special type of process is a minimal process. Minimal processes are just empty processes. They have no initial threads, an empty address space, no loaded modules, and none of the standard process data structures. These processes are created by the Windows kernel, and there are no direct ways to create them yourself. These processes can have threads called minimal threads, but they have no environment block or stack. An example of this is the memory compression process. It's a minimal process used to store the compressed memory of active processes without paging them out on the disk. Next we have Pico processes. These are a type of minimal process with a supporting driver called a Pico provider. This driver is like the brain of the process. It manages all aspects of execution. This Pico provider is able to intercept all operations of the Pico process that invoke the kernel, such as system calls and exceptions. A Pico process can have normal threads or Pico threads. Pico threads are almost identical to minimal threads and have a context which is stored in the Pico context member of the eThread structure. An example of a Pico process is the first version of the Windows subsystem for Linux. It has two drivers, or Pico providers, which either translate Linux syscalls to NT API calls or implement the behavior from scratch. Trustlets are another type of process which provide extra security to applications. Trustlets use virtual trust levels, or VTLs, provided by the Hyper-V hypervisor to isolate themselves from other processes. These trustlets can import modules which have a certificate that is trusted by the system or which do not require any syscalls in order to function, such as mathematical libraries. And that's all for this time. If you enjoyed this video, share it with your friends and make sure to subscribe to the channel. See you in the next one.